Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are back on the wheel arch flares on the Ferrari. All right, guys, well, um, as you might have seen last week, uh, I started putting the wheel arch flares onto the Ferrari. It's a controversial topic, but uh, if you want to catch up, I'll put a link up above. And if you're enjoying these videos, please think about subscribing. It uh, definitely helps us out. Yes. Lots and lots and lots of comments about the uh, the flares that I'm putting on the Ferrari. Yes, I am going to stick with the flares. Yes, I'm going to stick with fiberglass flares. Lots of comments saying, why didn't I do it out of steel? Um, I'm happy enough with the fiberglass flares, to be honest. The amount of work to make them out of steel and uh, my level of uh, fabrication is probably not there to do it uh, yet. I, I probably could, but it would take me a long time and uh, I'm just happy enough to, uh, to go with these. As far as the fixings go, I have got a plan. Uh, I believe I've found out since that there are actually better uh, captive nuts designed for this, which has got a big sort of square plate on the back of it so that it can actually really lock into the fiberglass, which these ones don't have because um, those who missed it, uh, basically I've made the fixings on the back of these arches. I didn't want to have the rivets visible on the front. Um, but some of them are spinning in their, uh, in their spot, but I've got a plan to fix it. So um, let's get these off now. They've been setting up for the last week. So uh, let's peel them off and uh, see if I've done a better job on this side than I did on the other side. So I've just gone through and done some of my favorite things, which is cutting fiberglass. I've trimmed the inner edge around some of these, um, getting prepared to put my dowel pins in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark on this outer edge and all of these have a lip on them that I don't want. Um, I want these to be a nice, smooth, flush transition into the body of the car. So I've gotta uh, just mark them out and trim them out now. More cutting fiberglass, it's so nice. The, um, the dust is just, it's just so, so, pleasant and soothing on the skin. <laughs> Let's go. So I've gone too far to be able to replace the captive nuts with purpose-built square base nuts that uh, I should have used, but I've come up with an ingenious plan to fix my current situation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole either side of the existing nuts and I'm going to cut off small little pins of stainless steel welding rod and epoxy those either side of the existing nuts to lock them in place. And then I'm going to go through and uh, reinforce the whole thing over the back of all of them so that they should not move again and they'll be nice and solid. It is the longer way of doing it, but hindsight is always 2020. Alright, so I've gone through now and I've, um, I've put my little dowel pins basically in around all of the captive nuts to hopefully lock them all into place. And uh, I'm going to go through now, I'm going to use some fiberglass filler and just fill any of the little gaps and stuff like that where, where I'm not quite happy with how uh, it's all filled out. And, uh, and also, I'll probably put a bit more fiberglass filler up underneath the edges up, so just to get it just to get it right. Um, I've sanded back all the edges as well, so um, I got rid of the lips and they've got a nice, uh, nice sort of profile on them now. I just want them just right. Mm -hmm. 
So I've gone through now, I've put uh, fiberglass filler on all of, all of the edges, all the little bits where they were missing stuff. Uh, any of the captive nuts that weren't completely covered in fiberglass before, I mean the main ones that were spinning were the ones that I actually hadn't got a, uh, uh, completely encapsulated in, uh, in, in fiberglass originally. So this uh, fiber reinforced filler is uh, sort of filling in all those spots. Obviously I've got my little dowel pins through all of them as well. So now I need to go through, uh, I've laid all, all the verse code on. Now I can go through, I can grind off the little tips of all of the little pins that are coming out and then start sanding fiberglass, my favorite. So we have all the uh, arches now are uh, all nice, trimmed out, fitting on the car with a nice seamless uh, finish or a nice seam, I should say. Um, I am really happy with that. That it's uh, it's really good. There's a few tweaks in the bodywork stage I'm going to have to do, but for the time being, that is what I was after. That is the look I wanted. I wanted them to sit nice and flat with the car with a uh, with a nice thin gasket of some sort around the edge. I don't want a thick rubber piece. I'll just have maybe some, some good uh, 3M double-sided tape or something like that underneath there, just to give it a, uh, a very, very neat join onto the body. And um, it all looks like part of it, but the paint won't crack. Uh, yeah, happy with that. I'm happy with the fitment now. I've got my arches where I want them to be, and this is the part where some of you might want to look away. Um, many of you are asking, am I going to cut these out or should I leave them because I've gone all to this trouble? Uh, and yes, I am definitely going to cut them out. The inner arch in this car is actually, um, uh, on both sides of the rear, is still got rust in it that I never treated because I was I knew that I was going to be putting these flares on and. Uh, and I had to make space for the wheel to travel up higher and not hit them. So I don't have tires as of yet. Um, there were lots of comments saying that I should get tires and put them on the rims, and I agree. But um, getting tires in the right sizes is very difficult at the moment. There's very little supply out there. Um, I'll see what I can do, but I am still measuring. I know roughly the size of what the tires are going to be, so I can put the rims on, uh, jack everything up, and see where um, where they're potentially going to contact and where they're not uh, at full bump. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just sort of uh, play it by ear as, as, uh, as we go. But uh, for the time being, I've got my holes marked here. So uh, now what I need to do is need to trim off uh, some of this outer lip and then bring the inner lip in to meet it so that it's uh, sort of, it's all nice and sealed in there and we're not going to get mud and stuff flicked up in the joint. So. Uh, Let's mark and cut.
All right, so you can see here that I've trimmed out this uh, inner and outer skin. Um, I was trying to panel beat the inner skin over, um, but it's hard. I can't get a dolly onto the back edge of the inner skin very easily and be able to get in there. And looking at it, I think the easiest way to be able to um, bring these two together and to sort of fill this out nicely. Um, I have a really nice bolting uh, position for these bolts, uh, double skinned all the way around, is actually I'm going to go inside the arch and I'm going to trim it on the inside of this line all the way around and, uh, and then I can place this outer piece exactly where I want it and then just put a patch piece all the way through. I think that's gonna be the way to do it. But again, I think that's something I'm gonna do when I get it on the rotisserie because uh, as it is, it's gonna be difficult to get to. That is another horrible, itchy, scratchy episode. Uh, <laughs> I really hate fiberglass stuff, but um, it's it's good for what it's designed for. Um, but I've got the four uh, wheel arches now. I'm confident that uh, the captive nuts are not going to spin around in their in their holding, even as I've been trying them out. They seem to be working quite nicely, so that's a good thing. I'm going to obviously finish them off completely when um, I've go back to the bodywork stage, but they, they all fit now. I've uh, trimmed the guards front and rear now. Uh, I will join up the rear, inner and outer. Uh, when I get it on the rotisserie, it's gonna be easier to, uh, to sort of line that all up. And I have finally received a bunch of the parts that I have been waiting ages for. So next week, I should be able to start getting stuck into some other bits and pieces that I have been dying to get into for a while. Um, so hopefully you'll join me for that. Uh, but for now, I think that's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, from 1937 to 39, Enzo Ferrari ran Alfa Corsa, Alfa Romeo's in-house racing team. Now, after heading his own team, Enzo Ferrari struggled working under Alfa's head of engineering, and he left shortly afterwards following a disagreement. Part of his contract with Alfa meant that he could not build or design race cars or trade under the Ferrari name for at least four years. Enzo instead went on to establish Auto Avio Costruzioni, which made parts for race teams. Despite these restrictions, AAC still accepted a commission from the Marquis of Modena to build two race cars, which competed in the 1940 Milli Miglia. Due to the outbreak of World War II, Mussolini's regime forced Ferrari's factory into war production. The factory was actually bombed during the war and it was reopened again in Maranello, leaving its Modena site. All right, that is a very, I'm um, just itchy and scratchy. I hate working with fiberglass, <laughs> but they're the, the right thing for this. I know a lot of you would like to have seen me made them out of steel, but uh, I'm happy enough with the fiberglass options. And now they're gonna sit on there nicely and just blend in and not be uh, you know, hidden fixings and all the rest of it, which I think are going to be a good part of the build. And, uh, Finally, I've got those other parts in, so I'm looking forward to actually getting in and doing some more work next week uh, that I've been waiting to do for a long time. Progress. Yes. We shall be seeing progress. It's exciting, it's so we exciting, because it took ages for these parts to arrive. It, yeah, like- Eight like months. Yeah. Not that, I mean, it could be worse, but yeah. yeah. Yes, we're, we're, not, we're not. So, yeah. um, all right. Please, uh, if you'd like to see the videos a day early, please follow us on Patreon and you get to see them without ads. I really feel like I'm stumbling over my words. It's just like when I do Mrs. Jeff, but with the bloopers incorporated. Yes. Sorry. It's our favorite part. Been a long day. <laughs> and uh, do all the other things. Follow us, Facebook, Instagram, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> see <laughs> you guys. And he left shortly afterwards after having, no, it's not right, to 1939. Enzo Ferrari ran cars under the Ferrari name for up to four years. Now I'm just like, this is just not build or design or trade race cars. No? <laughs> design or build or trade. <laughs> or trade. 
No. Read it again. Or trade under the name. I was, you cut me off if I got under the trade under. No, because you thought oh. or trade is something else. No, listen, I was going to say trade under. Design or trade, no. Part of his contact <laughs> or trade under the Ferrari name for at least four years. <laughs> Let's push on. For cars, part of race team cars, not race team parts. Yeah. Key of Modena to build two race key keens. That's a Gosselin, a car and a team's a keen.